Ronambour 1664. Sponsor du Tour de France. Peter Ugramov, the strongman of the Alps, gets his stage in at last in Clues. His lone breakaway makes him a serious challenger now for second place in Paris. Injury may be the general in this tour, but the next four scrap for the runner-up spot. Hello again and welcome to Avoriaz, the last mountaintop finish in this year's Tour de France, and indeed the end of a very cruel final week here in the Alps. We're into the mountain time trial now, and we really do expect Miguel Injury to increase his overall lead in this year's race but what a marvelous battle is going on for second place let's go to paul Sherwin now to analyze the quality of the four men who are vying for a podium place in paris behind miguel in Durain. luc leblanc the french leader of the festina squad was the man most expected to climb onto the podium in paris However, after several unsuccessful attacks in the mountains over the last two days and his dubious time trialling ability, I see him being the big loser. The little Italian Marco Pantani, on the other hand, should have a great chance. Undisputedly the best climber in the race, the terrain today should suit him. My only question is, has he recovered enough from his crash from a few days ago and the damage to his left knee? Under normal circumstances, I would put Latvian Piotr Ugramov as hot favourite to climb onto the Parisian podium. But after two days of hard attacking in the Alps, I wonder if he's recovered enough to push himself in the mountain time trial. Finally, the favourite from France, Richard Virenc, who has ridden so courageously to rise to second place in the overall standings. He's rarely performed well in a time trial, but with this tough uphill course and the motivation to finish in the top three in Paris, he could produce the big surprise. Accepting the fact that Miguel Indurain is most likely to win, I would place Pietro Ugramov in second and Marco Pantani in third place. Well, thanks, Paul. It certainly is an all or nothing day for these four riders today. The 45 kilometers race of truth starts in clues and climbs from Leger to 1,165 meters. And then it's downhill into Morzin itself before the long haul out begins and finishes up at the finish line at Avoriaz at 1,850 metres. The first man away today, the long-term ruse, the last man in the Tour de France, was Johnny Tarlan from Holland, who left the start house at precisely 22 minutes past 11 and finished in a time of 1 hour 37 minutes and 23 seconds. Sean Yates set now to finish his ninth of 11 tours, recorded 1 hour 35 minutes and 20 seconds. And here's the man now who's dreaming of a place in Paris, but he has a lot of work to do, Luc Leblanc, if he's going to claim that alongside Indurain in just two days' time. Leblanc lying fifth overall, and the riders starting out of the start house every two minutes, and just five men left to go. A very, very nervous moment. It is, and you can see the actual little bit of stubble on his chin there, meaning that he hasn't shaved this morning, putting everything to one side, because riders believe but if they shave the day of a race, they lose just that little bit of energy. And as Luc Leblanc launches himself off on this time trial, he wants every possible attribute on his side. Well, the mountain today is throwing just about everything at the riders because it's sunny down here at the start in, Le in Clues. But in fact, once they get halfway up the mountain, it's raining. And then they go into cloud and the, the rain on top of the mountain is coming and going. It could be either dry or wet by the time Luc Leblanc arrives at Avoriaz. A little bit higher up the mountain and give you a feel for the climb here. This is Enrico Zaina, 300 metres to go for him at Avoriaz. The best time so far by Vladislav uh, Bobrik and his time in the house, 1.28.08. But we're going to see a new leader's time now, Zaina coming in for Italy, 1.27.16. And that's a good time. In the start house, Marco Pantani now trying to fight back into third place overall. He lost it by just two seconds yesterday when Peter Ugamov won the stage and then the clock counted Pantani two seconds out and he dropped to fourth. It's a narrow margin. If this man's knee is OK, well, who knows what sort of ride he'll do. And a glimpse there of Jean-Francois Bernard. He's won a mountain time trial before, back in 1987, 
on that great mountain Mont Ventoux where this race crossed last Monday. He went through the first check with the third best time thus far, six seconds slower than Vladimir Pulnikov, and his time yet to come up at the 24 kilometer point. Back down to the start house now, Peter Ugrimov planning another assault in the Alps perhaps. The last two days he's been the champion of these mountains. So a start then for the Latvian Ugrimov. He shoots out of the start house, includes the climbing starts very quickly as they get up to Leger. And uh, my goodness me, if anybody can climb these mountains today well, then surely it is him. He finished second in last year's Tour of Italy, pushing Miguel Indurain all of the way. And it could well be he'll be able to claim a second place finish in the Tour de France by the end of this ride. As we now see Vyatislav Yekimov coming up. He's going to chase the time of Arturus Kasputis from Lithuania, and he'll beat that. And so Yekimov has had a good ride up the mountain today, but he's no longer a challenger in this year's Tour. And so Ugramov has gone. The man to start behind him is Richard Berenk, the polka dot jersey. His now as king of the mountains in this year's Tour de France. But he would so dearly love to hold on to a podium place. Second place in the Tour de France for him would be a formidable result. He looks young, he is young, and the only man left to chase him up the mountain today, the big man himself in Durain. Well, that should spur him on a little bit, knowing that Miguel in Durain starts two minutes behind him on this time trial, and it really is great day for Richard Biron. He has to put his best time trial of his life in today to try and stay on the podium because he's really going to be pushed by Marco Pantani and Ugramov and also Luke Leblanc if he can do an excellent ride but I think it'd be a superb performance by this little rider here as he goes down off on his way to the top of this mountain and he's really going to push himself all the way. You can bet your life he's, he's really going to try and push himself right into his rhythm straight away here. He's full of enthusiasm, and let's hope he does. This is Bjorn Rees coming up the hill here. He's caught the man that started in front of him. And he was a challenger, but he had the one bad day that all top bike riders fear in the Tour de France. He came three days ago in the Alps, and that wrote him out of the script for a high finish like he had in last year's event. But even so, you can see the quality here as we approach the 24 kilometers point of his riding. He's going to run very close to the time of Jean-Francois Bernard, just a little bit slower. Charlie Motte has gone through. He's already on his way up to the summit now. He's passed through at 33 kilometers, still holding second best time there. And Reese goes through in the, the fourth best. No, in fact, the clock hasn't stopped yet. And he heads up to the time check, settled in to his rhythm once more. This is the area that caught the rainstorm a little bit earlier. And Reese goes through 40 seconds off the leaderboard. That's not bad. A few minutes of concentration, a few deep breaths to fill those big lungs, and then will come the launch from the start house. Indurain goes on his way. The whole field in the Tour de France is in front of him. His eyes firmly set, though, on the man two minutes up the road, Paul Verenk. Well, he won't be very long, I don't think, before he sees Richard Virenk. As soon as we start to climb, Indurain will get that big engine of his going. And you see he's actually adopted, like everybody else in the time trial today, for a standard bicycle. The only addition is those little tri-bars that he's put in the middle. He needs a standard bicycle to get up this mountain to climb the col up to here in Avoriaz. So Indurain now, the lonely road ahead of him, but for how long will it be before he starts seeing riders in front? Remember, he's behind all of his challengers in this year's race and the four men in front of him are scrapping out there for second place in Paris behind this man his overall the lead this morning seven minutes and 22 seconds it's impossible to lose that in the time trial today and if it goes his way he might even build it up a little bit as well the best times through the checks at the moment Vladimir Pulnikov is leading at nine and a half kilometers but the top names are still to arrive there and the best time in the finish is uh, Enrico Zaina one hour 27 minutes and 16 seconds so as Indurain has made his start and he's now heading towards the first climb of two today we'll take a break Welcome back. Now, this being a time trial, albeit one that goes straight up the side of a mountain, there shouldn't be any abandonments today. And if that's the case, it'll be the first time as many men have finished the race as started it since back on stage 10. It's been
been an exceptionally tough tour this year of the 189 riders who started out from Lille on July the 2nd, 70 have so far dropped out for one reason or another, including almost half the team leaders in the race. Here then is a selective recap of those who won't be seeing the Champs-Élysées, starting with one of our own. Chris Boardman was the first leader of the race and the first stage winner to leave it. Any embarrassment he felt at being caught by the camera, tempered by relief at not having to face the mountains. He wasn't alone for long though. The exit stage winner left club now includes French champion Jackie Durand, Nikolai Minali, who took the stage win in Portsmouth, and Jean-Paul Van Poppel. The first of the really big names to go was three-time tour winner Greg LeMond back on stage six. Stars are usually extended the courtesy of a team car as a getaway vehicle. Sad to think that it was the broom wagon which carried Le Monde away from possibly his final tour. When the tour hit the mountains, the mountains hit back. Claudio Chiapucci finished at the tail of the field with his teammates around him at Lord Otacam, but he didn't start the next day. Tony Rominger did, but probably shouldn't have, giving in to illness on the road to Albi and virtually assuring victory for Miguel Indurain. At least he went out fighting, though, which is more than could be said for Gianni Bugno, who turned up in plain clothes at the start of stage 14 to say that if he couldn't win, he'd rather not play. Another disappointment was Lance Armstrong, walking away from his second tour before the challenge of Mont Ventoux. Yesterday, he was joined in the non-starters club by Armand de las Cuevas. Of course, the select bunch I've just mentioned was almost joined in voluntarily by 68 others who came in after the time limit at Val Torrens. Faced with eliminating more than half the remaining field, the race commissaire showed mercy on those who'd kept riding. Now, missing from that roundup were the two men who made the earliest exit from the tour. Remember this, the stage one finish at Armentier, when a policeman stepped out into the middle of the road to take a photograph and ended up producing the most dramatic shot of the race. Wilfred Nellison and Laurent Jalabert went to hospital with head injuries, and their tour was over almost before it had started. Well, the news on Wilfred Nellison is good. He's out of hospital now and should be riding again within about a week or so. But things aren't looking so bright for Laurent Jalabert. This is him a few days ago, still looking like a mugging victim. And he, at the moment, is on a liquid diet while the bones in his face heal. So his season is effectively over. The policeman, by the way, is recovering from a broken leg. And once he's up and about, presumably looking for alternative employment. All right, that's the casualty report. Back to the racing. Well, the gauntlet is down now because Ugamov for the third day in succession is giving us the pain on his face and all of the power out of those legs. He's heading up now again to this check. We've just seen Pantani set the best time ahead of Leblanc, and now Ugamov is going to alter the leaderboard yet again, and he's going to be a nice big margin separating the other two riders here, and a spell, I'm afraid to say spelling doom for Richard Berenk because I don't think he's going to get anywhere near Ugamov on the road today. The crowd cheering on, the, the rider from Latvia, and the clock's going to stop at 40 minutes, 18 seconds, almost a minute quicker now than Marco Pantani. That's tremendous. Let's switch lower down the mountain, where the rain has yet to reach, as we now see a struggling Richard Varenk here. And all of the cheers in France are going to be for this man. He's kept the hopes alive throughout this tour, along with Luc Leblanc. They've had a superb ride. As we go back up to one of the elder statesmen of the French cycling, Jean-Francois Bernard, once a winner in the mountain time trial. And now coming in with a very good time. It's only just going to be behind the top of the leaderboard. As he's now going in to finish at around four. He make third place, I think. He'll just be ahead of Rolf Sorensen on the line. So this is the situation with the two riders still to arrive at the 24-kilometer checkpoint. Ugramov leading by 54 seconds ahead of Pantani and by 1 minute 37 seconds ahead of Luc Leblanc. A little bit further up the road and it's not that far now. Uh, Richard Varonk is heading in to the checkpoint here at 24 kilometers at Leger. And you can see as the computer counts him down and drops him down the overall leaderboard, that Richard is now vying for seventh place and going on towards eighth. So he is over two minutes now behind uh, Ugramov. Well, the time trial can be so cruel to a rider who's ridden his heart out over three weeks and then in just a short ride of little more than an hour and 20 minutes, he loses the lot. And that seems to be now what is happening uh, to Richard Berenk. 
And now Miguel Indurain, his face uh, a little bit pained, which is indicating he's putting his heart and soul into this race today. As he starts to move up now, he is outside the time already of the leader, Ugramov. He's chasing the time of Pantani. He's going to get that up, but only just. Pantani is also riding well on the climb today. Big Mig is finding the guns around him have found themselves some live ammunition as he comes up towards the check here. And he is going to be behind Pantani. In fact, he's down to third, and that is a surprise. He's losing ground. Well, he had a right reason to be scared of the final week of the Tour de France this year, that's for sure, because now he's gone behind the two climbers, the men who knew that they had a chance of dethroning him in the final week of this year's Tour de, Tour de France. And I'm quite surprised to see him so far behind. In fact, he's still coming up to the time check now, and he's going to be very close to even Luc LeBlanc's time. And in fact, Indurain is third, LeBlanc is fourth, and so Indurain now is finding the men behind him at the end of the Tour, as they did last year, are closing the gap a little bit. And here's the battle on the mountain between the two riders are fighting out second and third place, and it's in the favour of Ugramov at the moment by a minute and 31 seconds, and Pantani uh, settling in to third place in Paris, it seems like. That's uh, Richard Veronk as we pull back on our helicopter here. We're going to pick up the yellow jersey of Miguel Indurain. But, Paul, he's, he's taking a long time to close the gap on somebody like Vereng today. He definitely is to begin with. He pulled back over two minutes, but the first part of the course definitely suited Miguel Indurain even more than it did Vironk. But once we've got to the climb, Vironk has just managed to lift the pace a little bit, and Indurain can't bridge that last one-minute gap between them. Indurain here looks to me now as if he's starting to feel the pain quite a bit. This is the first time I've actually seen him getting out of the saddle to try and get himself going again. He's having a tough time, Miguel, today. Well, he's riding now, I suppose, about 20, 25 seconds behind Varenk. We haven't had Varenk's time through the 43-kilometre check yet. And Indurain will be then through just behind him. And then we'll have all of the men onto the final phase of the course this year. Still the best time, by the way, in the finish is Charlie Motte, a 1 hour, 27 minutes and 11 seconds. And if everything goes according to plan, that, that will be the fifth fastest time of the day by the time we bring up these men here. And this should be the best time. Peter Ugramov, the only Latvian in the race and riding superbly these last few days here in the Alps. And he's going to crown it with a great victory today. And the crowd that we became used to seeing every year on the top of Alpe d'Huez, now here on the Vorias, are watching the key men in this year's Tour de France come to the summit. And this is Marco Pantani, his first Tour de France, and we've come to like him very much. And here's the rider who indeed won at the top of Alpe d'Huez, finishing now, Roberto Conti. 200 metres is a long way at the top of a mountain. And now he's matching the time of Vladislav Bobrik, the early leader. He just beats him and Conti goes into sixth place. One kilometre from the end of the time trial, the end of the mountains in the Tour de France, and I think the reward for Pantani will be a well-deserved place on the winner's podium in Paris in two days' time, but not as the winner. Not as the winner, but it's going to be fantastic, and I really am glad to see that he's managed to climb up into the top three placings in the overall standings, because if he hadn't had that horrendous crash a couple of days ago, I'm sure he would have attacked again yesterday and really would have got there anyway. And now the arrival of the first of the top five at the start line this morning, Luc Leblanc. He's responded well to the climb. He's done his very, very best today for France and for his team, Festina because he's been setting the mark all the way through the checkpoints as the best time as he's run through them. And he's going to be the best time on the line as well. He's comfortably ahead of a great ride there by young uh, little old Charlie Motte riding his final Tour de France. But Luc LeBlanc is going to set the trend now. The rain still coming down on the summit. LeBlanc the best time, 1 hour 26.49. Well, that has to be the best time trial he's ridden in his life, but in fact, Marco Pantani has almost caught him by the top of the finish here. There's just 200, 350 metres to go for Pantani, so he started three minutes behind Luc Leblanc at this climb, so he's going to finish with about two and a half minutes advantage over the little Frenchman. And now at last we see the face of Pantani. We've been denied that all the way up the climb because of our cameras not being allowed ahead of the riders because of it being a time trial, but now from our fixed cameras, Pantani spins towards them. And we've just seen LeBlanc set the trend, and we're now going to see Pantani take it to fresh heights here as he spins home. There's a lot at stake in the Tour de France for these riders today. 
and they come to the summit of Avorias. Marco Pantani gets the lead now, 124.37, an increase of 2 minutes and 12 seconds over Lebon. Well, this uh, for me has been the man of the tour this week in the Alps. He's attacked every day. Indurain has watched and conserved his energy, but this man has gone out and delivered the blows whenever it's been possible. He was robbed by Nelson Rodriguez at the finish of Val Torrens. He took a men's yesterday when he finished alone after breaking clear before the Col de la Colombia. And today he was afraid, and he actually said it yesterday, I think I'll be too tired to ride well in the time trial tomorrow. Well, he must have felt from the gun today he wasn't, because Peter Ugramov comes to the line with a time that will survive the passage of time today. It's going to be a great time. He's going to be the winner of the time trial. He's going to go home for the Tour de France, saying he also was one of the few men in the world who has beaten Miguel Indurain at his own game. One hour, 22 minutes and 59 seconds, a minute 38 better than that talented climber Marco Pantani. Uh, so Indurain closing down on his start gap, uh, but surprisingly to us, he didn't catch Richard Varenk, and I felt that uh, he would have caught him uh, somewhere on the the midway up this big climb of Avorias, and I think Varenk can take a lot of encouragement from the fact he's held off Miguel Indurain uh, throughout the climb, and he won't let him by now as he sprints up towards the line. So the young man who will be crowned the King of the Mountains 1994 in Paris may have lost out as far as the top three finish goes in this year's Tour de France, but he's certainly nothing at all to be ashamed of. He's ridden fine today. He may well have dropped down to fifth place in the overall standings because he's lost an awful lot of time there. You see, he's one, one hour and 28 minutes is a long way off the leaderboard. Six minutes already behind Pietro Ugramov. A big slice lost indeed as Varenk comes up and he's alongside a rider like Giancarlo Perini. Now normally he would have beaten him uh, any time of the day on a mountain, but today he hasn't. And in fact, it's going to pass on even further than that to Bjorn Rees, a high finish in last year's Tour de France and lost a lot in the mountains this year. Now down to Franco Coccioli and Yekima, both stage winners in previous tours. And 6 minutes 04 conceded 17th place then. Uh, for Varenk and then immediately behind the man himself to the cheers of the crowd uh, beaten today into well it's going to be close it's going to be very close it looks like he's got third place Paul so he's come back well over the last few kilometers of the climb Miguel Indurain finishes in third place on the stage today and that in itself will be certain for him to conserve his lead overall in the Tour de France Two wins in two days, but this one was the one that Peter Ugramov wanted, beating Marco Pantani by a minute and 38 seconds, and Miguel Indurain three minutes, 16 seconds behind. Luc Leblanc was fourth, and Charlie Motte was fifth. On the podium tonight, the man of the Alps, Peter Ugramov, salutes the crowd here at Avorias. Overall, there are changes. Ugramov now is in second place, five minutes, 39 behind Indurain. Pantani comes in at third, Luc Leblanc is up to fourth, and Richard Veronk, the big loser today, goes from second down to fifth. But Miguel Indurain, with the weekend to come, will now surely win this year's Tour de France. Well, ten days ago, everybody was predicting that Miguel Indurain would win this Tour by more than ten minutes. This final week in the Alps, he's actually conceded time. And there's just time to remind you before we go tonight of our competition, we'd like you to name the winner of Sunday stage on the Champs-Élysées. When you think you have it, the number to ring is 0891 444444. The very best of luck, the prize will be the yellow jersey of Miguel Indurain, signed by him. And tomorrow, our programme will come to you at five minutes past eight. We'll be on the flatter roads at Lac-Saint-Point. Until then, good night. <laughs>